Okay, friends, we're gonna get started on our snow globe, still life today. You need, of course, a piece of clean white sheet of paper, a drawing pencil, um, probably some type of a black marker for outlining, colored pencils, crayons, markers, all good for adding color. Also, because we're gonna be wanting to draw quite a large round circle, it's really super helpful if you have something to help you trace the circle. So you can look for circle tracers around your house, like a nice big plastic lid you can lay on your paper to trace around, or even taking like a cereal bowl, it doesn't have to be plastic or paper, taking a cereal bowl, turning it upside down and holding it down very carefully is another thing you can easily trace around. You just wanna make sure that it's big enough so that you end up with a snow globe that has enough space so that you can draw all the things inside. Now, I already lightly traced my snow globe, so I am ready to go back in and draw my line a little bit darker. And sometimes it's easy to do this by turning your paper. So I'm turning my paper, very carefully tracing my snow globe line, turning my paper, and I'm making this nice and dark so you can see it. You can go all the way around. And then the base of the snow globe, where the snow globe sits, is actually really easy to draw. You go to the bottom of the snow globe and you draw two diagonal lines that are about an inch long. You want them to be long enough to maybe fit at least one of your fingers inside. And then after you draw those two diagonal lines, you're gonna connect them with a curved line. Now the reason why we have to make sure this is a curved line is because the snow globe is round and if you draw a straight line across, it doesn't really make it look as round. So after I do that, now I'm ready to think about all the details I wanna add inside my snow globe. Now we saw examples of snowmen or Christmas trees or winter trees or penguins or even like a little log cabin. You can draw thinking about what shapes they are and you can add anything you want in this space. I've already thought about it and decided that I'm gonna make some snowy hills. And then I wanted to add a winter tree and trees, you know, can be lots of different shapes, but winter trees that keep their pine needles in the winter often look like the shape of a triangle. So one of the things you can do is draw the shape of a triangle first and then go back in and add zigzag lines on the side like that to make it look like an evergreen tree, the kind of trees that stay green in the winter. Another way to do that is to draw several triangles kind of stacked on top of each other. There's my winter tree. And then next to my winter tree, I'm gonna draw a snowman. But instead of making my snowman three snowballs tall, I've decided to make him a little bit shorter because I want him to look kind of cute. So I'm gonna make a big circle on the bottom for my snowman. And then I made a little space right here to make him a scarf. So I'm gonna draw a big circle on the bottom, make him a little scarf in the middle, and then I can draw the little lines of the scarf blowing in the wind. And then a smaller circle sitting right on top of that scarf at the top. And then I'm gonna put a hat on him. Since my snowman is dressed for winter, I'm gonna give him a little beanie hat, little poof ball on top. He's starting to look pretty cute two big round eyes, a sideways triangle for a carrot nose, and then a cute little smile, and two big buttons on his belly. And then I can add the Y-shaped arms for his snowman arms, which are usually made out of tree branches. 
sticking out like that. So those are the details I decided to add for inside my snow globe. I'm also gonna color it and add lots of snow falling in the background and make it look really nice. But this is the end of step one. Okay, friends, now we are ready for step two. We get to decide what do we want our snow globe sitting on top of. You could do, like with the coffee mug example, you could draw two lines going on either side of the snow globe and then decorate this all below it like a big tablecloth with lots of polka dots or checkerboard patterns or stripes and give it lots of color to look like a tablecloth. You could even set maybe like another little coffee mug on the table next to the snow globe or draw a candy cane next to it. That's if you wanted your snow globe to look like it's on a table. Um, you can also draw your snow globe on a shelf. I've decided to make my snow globe on a shelf for my still life. Um, so I drew a line going on other side of my snow globe, and then I drew a line going underneath it to make the edge of the shelf. And then I'm gonna drop down just about a one finger space and put another line to make it finished to look like the edge of the shelf. Now it looks like it's really sitting on top of a shelf. Now, I thought about what if, with all this space I have in the bottom, if I put a fireplace below it? Because that really makes me think of winter still life. And since we're trying to warm up our winter still life here, I decided to take the shape that I used to trace my snow globe with and drop it down, and this time only trace half of a circle like this to make a nice arch for my fireplace. So down below this shape, I can draw two logs and some fire coming out to make it look like a warm, comfy fireplace. Okay, friends, the third and the fourth step is to go ahead and start outlining all of your details with either a black marker, a black crayon, or you can use colored markers too. I love to outline in colored markers because I also love to add little details with colored markers. So what I did is I took a blue marker and I outlined all the way around my snow globe. That helps give it a really wintry effect, especially if you have any light blue markers. Those work really nicely for that. And then I outlined my snowman with black so he would show up really nicely as white and I colored in his little orange nose outlined my tree with greens, you can tell, and then my snow with gray. If you have a gray marker, um, you can outline your snow with gray. Blue would also work really, really nicely too. I'm gonna color all these spaces in with crayon in just a minute and you'll see me do that. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you, inside the snow globe, make sure that you make the snow falling. I did that by drawing little tiny circles, little dots of circles, and then I colored around each circle with a blue marker. So I am gonna be really careful when I color, not to color up, cover up all those little white circles. Down here, you can see how I outlined my wood, or my uh, stones with gray, and I even outlined my logs in the fire. Now it's time to color. How do you know when you are totally finished? Well, when you have your um, details all outlined and your background all outlined and you can see your snow inside your snow globe and then everything colored in really nicely, either with crayon or colored pencil, whatever you have available to you and your whole picture doesn't have hardly any white space left. 
that's when you know and can say, yes, I am done with my snow globe wintertime still life and I'm ready to show it off to the world. Have a happy holidays.